Hey there, Concussion Doc here, Dr. Cameron Marshall, and let's talk all about why helmets don't prevent concussions. Let's bring up our friend Tom Brady here. Well, he may be friends to some of you. Now, if Tom Brady is going to get hit directly on the side of his skull with a small focal object or a small area, a small surface area of force, let's say head-to-head -head contact, if somebody's head hits him directly, a hard object, or let's say he was hit with a 100-mile-an-hour fastball right to the side of the head, that ball, that hard object hitting him in a small surface area potentially puts that skull under a lot of stress to the point where it can break and fracture, all right? That is the concerning part here. Now, if we were to replace Tom Brady's bare head with a helmet, and that same force came in and impacted on the side of the helmet now, well, what happens is that force actually spreads out. And now the contact area of the head, the helmet is actually the thing that's contacting the head, and it contacts it with a larger surface area. So on the head, it's actually getting a more distributed force like this. So it prevents the skull from breaking because it spreads out the surface area at which the force is delivered, but... The problem is, as the head moves side to side because of the impact, the brain inside the skull is still going to move. So the helmet can never really prevent concussion injuries. It can only prevent skull fractures. And this is why concussions continue to happen despite all the advancements in helmet technology. Here is just an image to depict this, but you can see how the brain sloshes around. And if we remember back to the first lecture I gave on uh, what happens inside the brain, remember I said it's the stretching of the axons. Well, you can see here as this brain moves back and forth, you can see how there's this fluid wave. Imagine every single brain cell along that fluid wave is stretching up and stretching side to side, getting a bit of a shearing through the tissue. That is what causes those brain cells to be stimulated, and that's what causes them to start firing uncontrollably, creating the symptoms of a concussion. Now, there's some newer technology out there. Many have heard of maybe the Vysis helmet, which is a softer cord helmet that has these individual kind of columns within it. And the idea is that as you can slow down the acceleration or as you can slow down velocity over a longer period of time, you can reduce acceleration. Remember, concussion is due to acceleration and high amounts of deceleration. The purpose of airbags in your car is so that your head doesn't hit the firm steering wheel. The airbag comes up and it allows you to slow down over a longer duration. So the big thing here is time. If we can increase time, we can actually reduce acceleration. Because remember, uh, the formula for acceleration is acceleration equals the change in velocity, the change in speed, right? So you're at a starting point of 100 miles an hour and you're slowing down to 30 miles an hour. If you do that in a second, that is a lot of force transmission. Your deceleration is very high. And so there's likely to be injuries. But if you slow down from 100 miles an hour to 30 miles an hour over 50 seconds, you wouldn't even feel that. that's a very slow deceleration. So there's likely to be no impact. So the big element here is time. Time is the most important variable. So by having these flexible core columns, the idea is we can increase the amount of time for which velocity is able to change. So the idea for these, and, and if you've seen any of the commercials for them, they look really interesting. The problem is the evidence shows they haven't been able to actually reduce concussion risk at all. And so, so far, the evidence shows that there's no real concussion benefit from these new helmets. In theory, it makes sense. Visually, you go, oh, yeah, look at that. It's a soft shell. But in reality, so far, we haven't been able to show that they reduce concussions at all. Now, new research may emerge on this, but at this present time, it doesn't seem to have a, uh, a strong concussion reducing effect. New helmets called Speed Flex are also emerging with the same kind of idea. Now, some of these helmets are starting to include what's called MIPS technology, where the outer shell actually moves, and this is to prevent rotational acceleration. So if you get hit and the, and the helmet pulls the head with it, the brain inside is going to accelerate. But if you're able to get hit and the core of the helmet twists, but the head inside stays neutral, you can actually reduce potentially some of that angular acceleration. Now, again, the technology on this sounds interesting, but the research so far hasn't been able to show any reduction in concussion with these particular helmets. So we're working on this problem, but so far it seems that helmets do not prevent concussions. 
Now, we may also see some of these, some of these gimmicks that are going around. This, these little skull caps that maybe have a little bit of extra layer padding, they'll market it as it's pre for preventing concussion. Now, come on. Do we actually think that if our goal is to increase time, that this little thin layer of foam is going to increase that time variable to any significant degree? No. These are a straight up gimmick. We're finding that soccer headbands and all this headgear in soccer and rugby do nothing to prevent concussion whatsoever. Again, helmets are designed to prevent skull fractures and protect the skull itself. And so far from a concussion reduction standpoint, helmets do not seem to make a difference. We have the same number of concussions in helmeted and unhelmeted sports. It just depends on the whipping motion of the head and the force that the brain undergoes after impact. So that's why helmets don't seem to matter. The big thing seems to be good, proper helmet fit. You want a good helmet that fits, that is approved by, uh, by regulatory bodies and is safe and not damaged. That's the big thing.